In this presentation, we are going to discuss solve problem 5 on RH criteria. So, let's get started. Determine the range of K for the system stability whose open loop transfer function is GSH is equal to K multiplied with e to the power minus st over s multiplied with s plus 1. So, in this problem, we are given an open loop transfer function GSHS and we need to find out the range of K for the system stability. So, we'll be applying the RH criteria in order to find out the range of values of K for the system to be stable. But we can see this open loop transfer function is looking somewhat different. Yes, there is an exponential term here. The open loop transfer function is K multiplied with e to the power minus st over s multiplied with s plus 1. So, this is the exponential term we are having extra in this open loop transfer function. So, with this problem, we will discuss that how we can handle this exponential term and how we can find out the range of k for the system stability by applying the RH criteria. So, let us now move on to the solution. This exponential term which is present in the system is nothing but the transportation delay. We have discussed this term transportation delay or transportation lag we can say in the first chapter. So, we will solve this problem with the same procedure. Firstly, we will find out the characteristic equation and then we will apply the RH criteria. But before moving on to find out the characteristic equation, we have to do the linear approximation of this term e power minus st. Because all the terms we are having in the Routh array are the linear terms. So, firstly, we have to perform the linear approximation of this term e power minus st and then we will continue with the same procedure. So, let us now move on to the linear approximation of term e power minus st and for this, we will use the expansion of e power minus x. So, do you know the expansion of e power minus x? Yes, the Taylor series expansion of e power minus x is 1 minus of x over 1 factorial plus x squared over 2 factorial minus x cube over 3 factorial plus so on up to infinity. Now, we'll be using this expansion for the linear approximation of e power minus st. So, now we know the expansion of e power minus x. So, we can find out the expansion for e power minus st by substituting st in place of x. So, the expansion of e power minus st will be 1 minus of st over 1 factorial plus st squared over 2 factorial minus st cube over 3 factorial plus so on up to infinity. We have replaced x with st in this expression. Now, the practical delay in the systems is in the order of microseconds or nanoseconds. And that's why these all terms are negligibly small. So, we can neglect them in the expansion of e power minus st. So, if we consider the first two terms in this expansion, the linear approximation of e power minus st will be 1 minus st. So, in this way, we are done with the linear approximation of e power minus st. Now, we will substitute 1 minus st in place of e power minus st in the open loop transfer function GSHS. And if we do so, we will have the modified open loop transfer function as GSHS equal to k multiplied with 1 minus st over s multiplied with s plus 1. Now, we can move with the same procedure of RH criteria. So, firstly, let us form the characteristic equation for this system. And we know if we are given the open loop transfer function, the characteristic equation can be determined from 1 plus GSHS equal to 0. So, if we put this expression in place of GSHS, we will have 1 plus k multiplied with 1 minus st over s multiplied with s plus 1 equal to 0. Now, if we take the LCM and open this bracket, we will have s squared plus s plus k minus k multiplied with st equal to 0. Now, we are having two terms of s in this expression. So, if we take s common from these two terms, we will have s squared plus s multiplied with 1 minus kt plus k equal to 0. And this is the characteristic equation for this system. So, let us now move on to form the Routh array for this characteristic equation. So, we will have the highest power of s and the subsequent power of s here. And we can fill the first two rows directly by using the coefficients of this characteristic equation. So, we can fill it like this 1, 1 minus kt, and k. Since we are not left with any of the coefficients in this characteristic equation, the second term in the second row will be equal to 0. Now, moving on to the last row, which is the row of s power 0. 
And we know that if this term is equal to 0, we can directly copy this term in this row. So the last term will be k. Moreover, we know that the last term of the route array is the constant term of characteristic equation which is equal to k. So in this way, we are done with the formation of routes array. Let us now apply the route stability criteria. So for the system to be stable, there should not be any sign changes in the first column of routes array. So the first term in this column is equal to 1 which is positive. So these two terms should also be positive for the number of sign changes to be equal to 0. So we can say k should be positive and 1 minus kt should also be positive. So we can write k should be greater than 0 and 1 minus kt should also be greater than 0. If we transpose this term to the right hand side, we will have k should be less than 1 over t. So we are having two inequalities. The first one is k should be greater than 0 and the second one is k should be less than 1 over t. From these two inequalities, we will have a range of k for the system to be stable and it is k should be greater than 0 and it should be less than 1 over t. So we can say the range of k for the system to be stable is 0 to 1 over t. So I hope you got this problem. This was a very simple problem, but there was a change in open loop transfer function. We were given the transportation delay, which is an exponential term. So before applying the RH criteria, we need to perform the linear approximation of this exponential term e power minus st. And we use the expansion of e power minus x in order to perform the linear approximation. After this, we move with the same procedure to find out the characteristic equation and forming the routes array. And then we applied the RH criteria in order to have the range of k for the system to be stable. So in this way, we are done with this lecture. This was the last problem in this chapter. From the next lecture, we will move on to the next chapter, which is time response analysis. As of now, we are done with this lecture. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this one here. See you in the next lecture.